Jesus said after Peter's confession of faith, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus says, when you are equipped with the gospel, you can tear down wicked arguments. Because there are arguments in the world against God. 9-11 brought up an argument against the goodness of God for people who don't know God was questioning God's integrity. People who don't even go to church, people who don't read the Bible, people who are not saved were questioning God's faithfulness. And, and many Christians were, were in a quandary as to how to answer their questions. We were, we were stepping back and, and throwing our, our hands up and shrugging our shoulders because we didn't know how to counteract the argument of the devil about the goodness of God in and through tragedy. But I want to help you with the gospel to pull down strongholds of satanic arguments that, that, that cast aspersions on the goodness of God. The next time somebody want to know from you where was God when I was suffering, you tell them God was in the same place he was when his son was suffering. He was on his throne superintending the affairs of men. Have I got a witness here? Somebody want to know where, where was God during that tsunami over in, in Asia and where was God when that earthquake happened over in Japan? God is in the same place he's always been. Ruling and super ruling over the heavens and the earth. God is not taken by surprise. When stress and trouble and trial come in your life, it doesn't move God off his throne. God knows what you're going through. And in his own time, he will step right in and take care of your situation. I need somebody here to know that God will make a way somehow. Have I got a witness here? I need somebody to help me testify. I don't always understand what he's doing. I can't always follow where he's going. But where he leads me, I will follow. You have to be, you have to be a Christian for quite a while before you can start talking that Paul talk. What you mean, Reverend? That Paul talk. After he had been shipwrecked. After he'd been run out of town by a mob. After he'd been let down a wall in a basket. After he had received 40 lashes minus one. After he had been hungry and naked and in peril of the sword. Paul said, after all of that, I had to learn that in whatsoever state I find myself in with the Lord I've learned how to be content I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength you can't do it in your strength you need the Lord's strength because your strength is going to wear out when you get old and feeble. But I hear Caleb. I wish I had a Bible reader. I hear Caleb say, I am just as strong now as I was then. And I hear the Lord saying to Joshua, as I was with Moses, so also will I be with you. And somebody here who's kind of weak and who's whose argument is kind of flimsy, I need you to recognize that you don't have to get in a debate with nobody about God's goodness. Just stand up and testify. Look at me. 
I wish I had a witness. You want to hear an argument about the goodness of God? Look at me. Look at my life. Let me tell you where I came from. Let me show you what God has done for me. That's the greatest argument I know. Somebody here was raised in the project. Somebody here struggled to get through college. Somebody here had a hard time trying to make ends meet at times. But look at you now. You got more than you can spend. You got food that you don't even eat. You got to decide what clothes to wear. You got shoes from the floor on up to the ceiling. God's been good to you. And that's the greatest argument. Against the stronghold of the devil. Gospel has power to destroy strongholds of argument. And then the gospel has power to destroy high towers of rebellious thought. Because people don't love God not because they don't know what the word says. But they don't love God because they are rebellious by nature. We rebel against God's goodness. We rebel against God's righteousness. Because it is human nature to want to do what you want to do. It is human nature to get angry when somebody points out to you your faults. It is human nature to try to excuse your bad behavior. Talk back to me if you can. You, you rationalize your ugly ways. Your strange and quirky disposition by talking about, well, I'm a Leo. I am the way I am because I'm a cancer. I got funny ways because I'm a Capricorn. No, you're low down because you're a sinner. And you rebel against the goodness and the will of God because God is going this direction and you want to go in that direction. And whenever you rebel against the will of God, Satan comes into your life and builds a stronghold. He builds a beachhead where he can come in, set up residence, and use you against the will of God. Let's, let's check out what the word says. The word says when a man cleans his house and sweeps out demons, if he doesn't put something in the demon's place, the word of God, the righteousness of God, the will of God, the faithfulness of God. If he doesn't replace what he swept out with something that's good, the demon will come back. But watch this. The Bible says he will come back not by himself. But with demons seven times stronger than the one you swept out. You get more stubborn. More egotistical. More proud. Because you thought you got rid of it last year. But if you haven't completely swept it out and replaced it with the goodness of God, the devil will come back in and build a stronghold. 